Hello, my name is Kathy Bissell. Welcome to the Golf Show 2.0. This week we have a movie star and a movie director from <laughs> The Long Game, which is a new golf movie that debuts next week. Uh, a director is uh, Julio Quintana, and our actor is Julian Works, who plays Joe Trevino, not Lee Trevino. And he's one of the main characters and the best golfer of, of the bunch that the story's about. Uh, Gary, why don't you ask a couple questions so we can find out more about this epic? Well, fellas, this came from uh, a novel based on a real real events. How did you guys find out about this project, and how did it get off, get launched and turned into a movie? Well, it was it, the book was Mustang Miracle. That was uh, yeah, it was based on the real uh, the real five kids, uh, teenage kids who who built their own course and ultimately won the Texas state championship in 1957. Uh, and uh, it was actually brought to me by the same producers as my last film, uh, which was called blue miracle. Also a, a true story. And uh, so uh, Javier Chapa brought me this project. And when I read it at first, I was like, is this too similar to, to what we just did? And then when I actually got into it and started digging into uh, what, this, what they, these boys actually pulled off, uh, I just decided that, you know, we had to do it. And I, and actually Julian, uh, I, I knew about Julian because he had auditioned for my for Blue Miracle, for my last film, and uh, he, he came down to the wire between him and one other guy. But ultimately, he was just like too too tough and cool. I couldn't couldn't cast him, but I loved the guy. Uh, and so I actually, when I was uh, when I was doing some revisions on the script, I was imagining him. He didn't know that, but I was I was thinking of him the whole time I was doing the revisions. And so I, uh, when I finally finished the script, uh, I was able to send it to him, and here we are. Yeah, the the, the story is basically. Uh... Some uh, some Mexican and Mexican American kids uh, are, ca are caddies at a club, and they they build their own golf course in the desert because they aren't allowed in the, in the country club. Uh, they become a high school golf team, and they get good. And uh, you know, and they and they not only do they win the state title, they win by thirty five shots. So it's it's your classic underdog uh, movie, as Kathy told me earlier. It's kind of like Hoosiers for for high school golf, it's, it's a real underdog. And uh, I'm sure there's some social messaging in there. Julian, what did you, how, how did you prepare for this? And were you a golfer at all before this movie? Yeah. So, I mean, luckily I had picked up the game maybe about, you know, two years before Julio actually sent the script over. Um, uh -huh. I mean, everyone knows about the, you know, the golf bug. Once you start, it's just, it's just, you kind of <laughs> just, you never stop. So uh, once I got the story and then, on top of that, it was a Latino story. I, I really felt, you know, really lucky to get the script sent over. I was really excited about it. Um, so, yeah, I read for it. And then once we went through the whole process of the casting, um, as far as, like, preparation for the actual film, what, uh, in what regard? What, what, what exactly are you asking, Gary? Well, did you have to work on your game, work on your swing? Yeah, so, yeah, so I guess the most important thing uh, what is the swing, right? Because whenever I watch, um, you know, a movie based, you know, whether it's a, some, kind of, some kind of sport, if your form is way off, you already lost me in the film. So I feel like that was, you know, one of the most important things was to make sure that my, you know, my swing looked good on camera, along with all the other casts. And uh, as far as where the ball lands, Julio did some great AI editing, so we didn't have to worry about exactly where it landed on that part. But, um, but you know, I, I, I'm, I'm okay at, at, at the sport, so I felt pretty comfortable on camera, you know, doing my swings. Um, and while you're shooting, I was literally – playing golf pretty much every day so i felt like everyone just got better as as you know the, the shooting went on and and the more comfortable people felt with their swings um and on top of that it kind of translate with the movies because we start off really raw mechanics are not all to par but you have someone like jay who's playing our head coach and dennis that's coming in and helping us coach so i feel like as the movie progressed we progress and it just kind of went flow and flow with the with the movie itself oh that's harmonic convergence I, I know you guys haven't played a lot of golf. Can you tell me each what would be your most memorable moment in golf? I don't know, man. I've spent a lot of time trying to get balls out of the water. Uh, <laughs> You're good with a retriever. Did you have a retriever? Yeah, oh, man. I, after a while, you just you just uh, you just start stealing balls from the range and going out and just playing. With it it's, it's not even worth. It's not worth it. It's not, it's not that good. But, you know, I will say that one thing that's a really I found really impressive was that you know golf's already hard, and but Julian, 
uh, we did have to do some VFX balls and stuff, yeah, but not, yeah. I don't think with Julian that because he, he actually he actually got really good. But what was weird about it was that he was using 1950s clubs, and if you see those clubs, the heads are so tiny, yep. and it, it, he had these old rusty clubs that that he had to and he had to he was sinking putts on on camera and stuff, and so um, it, it was actually I, 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 I give him a lot of crap, but I, I will say he he actually did get pretty decent in golf. That was that was pretty impressive. I uh, appreciate that, Julio. Yeah, I feel like with those clubs, I mean, I mean, if you're playing in, in the game, the I feel like with the putting, um, it, you know, it was, it was a bit boy. easier, you know, I mean, not easier in, with today's clubs. It, it was just, I guess, easier to show. And then when, when you're like 100 yards away, I mean, I'm using a pitching wedge anyways or a sand wedge. So I feel like as long as you get the ball up, the camera on front, it's going to look good wherever it lands. Uh, it's more so the drivers is what is what got me, you know, kind of. Uh, bobble my head a bit because the drivers are just so different. I mean, obviously they're wood based and and they're not you know titanium and all that. But um, but yeah, it was it was really cool to use the old clubs. Um, I I don't think I would ever use them in a real game today, obviously, because there's some disadvantages to those. But um, but yeah, they, I, I was I was really happy with the outcome for sure. Of course, you're talking about the kind of clubs that I grew up using. But <laughs> <laughs> if you can hit if you can hit those. You're gonna you pick up the current clubs and the game's yeah, easy, right? You're gonna be great. <laughs> we we actually had a guy on on this program uh, who has collected sets of old clubs. Wow! And he puts them in carry bags and he'll rent them out for people to play, you know, a special event at their golf course or their club or play a pro yeah, He's got 120 like sets. If you want to have an yeah. outing and make everybody play with the old clubs. <laughs> uh, or if you're he's, doing another golf movie. <laughs> I, I actually i actually have about 20 of those sets in my dad's basement that he keeps asking me what, what are you gonna do with these clubs i, I don't i got you gotta get these out of my house <laughs> we, got, we, we got the guy for you. he'll take them oh, okay yeah, he'll take them he'll take them willingly <laughs> julian you, you you your character is uh joe trevino uh i read you know in the movie he, he's a big hitter tell me a little bit about that and tell me who you saw joe trevino as what kind of a what kind of a person was he, character was he within the script? Yeah, I mean, I guess in, in breaking down the script, uh, right off the bat, Joe Trevino, you know, was, is just, you know, searching for respect at the end of the day. You know, he's dedicated, uh, but at the same time, he's not, um, I guess he's not really, doesn't have the energy to go in and, and prove it out because his father's not really supporting his dream to go out and, and go play the game of golf. And I feel like, during that time, um, he's just, like I said, just searching for, for respect in the game. And as far as him being a big hitter, um, w when you're a caddy, you know, working on the golf course and, and sneaking over on, on, you know, on the course when people are not looking and you're having time to, you know, practice hitting balls, um, you know, I feel like that's that's a good, for, good thing for any golfer. So I feel like Joe was just the kind of person, you know, that – Case basically, golf was that one sport that kind of took him away from from his home of, of whatever he was dealing with personally. So um, that that was really fun to do. It's interesting that you that the people who were real, the characters you're playing, um, several of them are still alive, I believe, and mm -hmm. they all uh, progressed and had some kind of a career in the area, and you know made great contributions to their communities. So I, I think it sounds like a win-win for them and for you and probably for golf movie fans. Yeah, and I think, I, well, and I, I, a couple of those guys, I, they really do credit golf with changing their life and helping yeah. them, you know, uh, learn responsibility. And I think that's, that's a big thing that I learned as I was making this movie is that, uh, about golf is that it is, there is so much honor and integrity that's required to, to participate in that game that, uh, that just by its nature, you, I feel like it's a, it's a really great avenue for young people to, to grow up and mature and learn responsibility. And uh, I mean, there, there, there's so many things about it that, you know, if you don't, if you don't fix the divots, then you mess it up for the next guy. And if you don't rake your sand trap and if you, there's somebody, nobody's keeping your score. There's no, there's no referee around. You got to keep your own score. So there, there's so much honor in the game that I think uh, it's a really great training ground for life. Just how to, just how to have integrity and be a good person. So. Movies yeah. are kind of hard to, organize you have to think in your head of everything that you want to show people and partic particularly for you you're the director yeah uh, what was the hardest shot or the hardest image to create out of all of the things in the movie hmm. uh i mean there was a couple of things that we did you know shooting in mexico the, the mexico sequence and the running across the river and all that stuff that was very 
physically demanding and all, shooting all night. But I think maybe the hardest day, the, the hardest day was actually probably the, the final parade scene. It was, uh, yeah, that, that was a hard day. Um, our, our hero car that are, that all these guys were sitting in actually broke down after a couple oh, of days. It just started overheating as this car from the fifties, you know, we don't have mechanics yeah. on the side. <laughs> uh, so it just started overheating and radiator fluid gushing out all over the place. So we actually had our, our producers ran up. We had three, three or four guys that just ran up and just started. They were just pushing the car back and forth up and down the road for about an hour. Oh, um, my God. Well, it looks like Dennis is driving, but we're actually just pushing that car around. So that, that was sort of how the whole movie came together. man. we just all we all it was very similar to how the boys in the movie built their own course. Like we just had to we just had to pull ourselves up and and just keep moving no matter what happened. So it was it was it was it was there were some tough some tough it, moments. The film is set in 1957. Julian, how did you how did you like uh, 1957 clothes and 1957 haircuts? How did, yeah, what did you I, think of that as a guy of the voice. 21st century? No, the yeah, I mean, I guess you never really truly well, prepare yourself right. for something like that until you you're like actually in it. So uh, I'm really thankful to you know everyone that worked you know behind set to to make sure that the set felt like it. I mean, uh, again, credit to Julio making sure he, he's picking out the right colors, the right clothes. Once you're in it. And once you're putting on the clothes and, and once you're doing the dialogue and, and once you're, you know, you're saying words that were said back then. And then I, I just feel like you, you as an actor, at least for me, it's just much easier to get in that world uh, once you're actually in it. So that was, you know, like I said, everyone always asks me, you know, oh, how did it feel playing in the 50s? And how did it feel like how did you prepare yourself? You, you really can't really prepare yourself until you're actually doing it. So you're actually putting on the clothes and, and, and seeing the people and, you know, seeing the people wear the clothes as well and, and having that conversation like they would back in the day. So uh, I'm really fortunate that uh, this crew did a great job in, in making us feel like we were in that time period for sure. I, so you're, I, you're, I, so into the, you're so into that moment. You don't have time to look around and go, this is so weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who would yeah, wear no, this? There, well, there's, oh my God, there was, there was one scene, it, it, it actually got cut out, but I was, when I read in the script, I thought it was, it was so cool. We have a, there was a scene that we're supposed to run up to a, a movie theater and, and it's the premiere of Giant, you know, with James Dean. It was such a big stable, you know, in the movie, we kind of used the red jacket theme on Gregory's character. And um, I, that just reading that, you know, it just kind of, you know, takes you back and, and just imagine during that time of, of film, even, you know, aside from golf, but even film at that time, you know, um, it just being in that time, being so present, um, it was yeah, like I said, the script really puts you in place mentally, but I feel like the clothes and, and the physical attires will put you there physically. So it was it was really fun. Well, it's also it, it, so it, great. How could you cut that, Julio? Well, uh, we, we weren't able to shoot it because we couldn't afford the rights to Giant. So yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what actually yeah. happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's interesting I, what Julian's saying, though, is interesting, though, because I think it's related to it's also related to the etiquette kind of conversation we're having about golf is that it that there's so much. I think we underestimate sometimes how much just embodying, uh, you know, you put on the uniform, you put on the, you, you tuck in your shirt, you wear the khakis, you, you uh, make sure you take off your hat when you're indoors. Like there's things, or you take off your hat when you shake your opponent's hand. There's things that the, 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 the etiquette yeah, transform, it transforms you. It, it actually makes you into a different person in a lot of ways. And so uh, I, I think, I think that's what the, the actors do that all the time, but I think we underestimate how much we do that even in, in real life in golf or in anything we do. I saw a really uh, cool photo of uh, Julian in a letter jacket. Yeah, from, yeah, that was. The, yeah, we everybody. The, I guess the, the whole team, team had a jacket. Right? Yeah, yeah, that was that was such a cool jacket. It, um, we caught a lot of flack though. We did we did a little uh, a little press run in the actual city of where the this, this town uh -huh. is based out of, and we caught a little flack because it wasn't the colors that that the original school had. But uh, I gotta say, I mean. The aesthetic on camera of the burgundy, I, I thought it looked really good. And um, yeah, that, that Letterman jacket is, is a classic for sure. I, I definitely loved it. Did you get Sorry, to keep it? Sorry, boys. Uh, so we when did not we get to keep it, but uh, <laughs> but I mean, I guess that's a question I should I should ask Julio now if he has it in his, in his garage. In his, yeah, in his it's also in my dad's basement. Yeah, yeah, we, <laughs> yeah we, kept all, we kept all that stuff in case we ever needed to reshoots, but I guess we're well past that oh. point. So yeah, <laughs> probably hand we these things have out. a nice promotion and have someone win the jacket. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be, yeah, that's a good. Okay, Kathy. Kind of like green jacket. You know what? We the gotta masters, add you to the, yeah. to the marketing team, Kathy. That's a good idea, right there. Yeah, yeah. Whoever sends me the nicest gift basket gets the yeah. it's Jillian, it's Jillian's jacket. <laughs> who, who was the uh, who was the best golfer of the uh, of all the actors? I think you're looking at him, Gary. 
Uh, well, I'm not an actor, but thank you for that. Oh, no, you did yourself. Got it. No, no, I, I think I can confidently say, I mean, at least amongst the group, but actually Dennis, I mean, if, if it was around yeah. everybody, it's Dennis. Dennis is Dennis is way above my level for sure. He's he's a great golfer. And and that's what that's the great thing, too, about having Dennis on set um, yeah. was that he really took it to heart to make sure that this thing looked authentic and, and, and you know, great as possible. So at any time, you know, someone was doing a swing that he felt wasn't up to par or, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, if there was a shot that we needed to do and, you know, Dennis was the first one to step in and be like, you know what, I think we should change this up. Let's do it this way, you know. Little, just little mechanics that that really helped, uh, you know, the, the film and making sure that when people saw it, especially actual golfers saw it, that they felt that this could be true and, and authentic and real. Good, you you realize wonderful. that both both of you guys are now going to be invited to play in all of these pro ams. Oh no! <laughs> and, you know, you're in a golf movie. You're famous celebrities. You're going to be invited to play at Pebble Beach and. Palm Springs and Phoenix Open. Uh, yeah. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think I'm going to have a – my thing is I, I got to get used to not just saying uh, cut, you know, or, or, or four or, or <laughs> shoot after each shot if I have a bad shot. That was the yeah, uh, another, incentive another that take. I had on the course. But, uh, but yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'd am I'm be super excited. I, I played at a few different great courses, you know, here uh, in, in Los Angeles and in the California area. Uh, we played at some great courses when we were in Columbia – um I, so i'm 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 ready for it i it'd be great to get a shot at you know up at augusta i, I seen that a uh, tiger woods documentary of when his caddy didn't pack enough balls and uh that would you know that, that would be cool to you know play on that course for sure <laughs> i'd be i'd be happy to caddy for julian yeah, yeah I, can, I can critique i can critique his form as we're going yeah. <laughs> so you you two are a set for the pro-am invitation yeah yeah, yeah. i'll hand them i'll hand them the clubs <laughs> i would love that would love when that. you went to columbia what golf course did, uh did you use down there well, we shot on, uh, I mean, a half a dozen golf courses. So what ended up happening was we, we wanted, obviously, the movie set in Texas. And we wanted to shoot in Texas, but uh, for there's no tax incentives here, and uh, and it was so, it's, and it's we just had a small budget. So in Colombia, we basically decided the golf courses, modern golf courses, have more or less been standardized uh, throughout the world. So we were able to go to Colombia, just shoot on the golf courses, um, and. Uh, and, and that, that really helped us. It was easier to get 150 extras over there than it was in Texas. I mean, uh, so so that was that was really the reason for that. So all the it was the golf stuff, the Mexico portion when when they crossed over the border to Mexico, and then the high school. I think those are the things that we did in, in Colombia, and then the rest we did here in Texas. So. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if uh, altitude had anything to do with it, but uh, I feel like playing at the courses in Colombia really like inflated my vision of what my shot is. What a normal two thirty, two forty shot would be. Uh, I feel like yeah. you would be able to hit it. You know, two fifty, two sixty. So yes. that was kind of cool to see. That that's that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. We, we used to have a uh, tournament on the PGA Tour that was played outside of Denver at, in Castle Pines uh, mm. Golf Club, and. Right. You adjusted for altitude. I think right. it's ten percent, isn't it, Gary? Yeah, it's about ten percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was. And so people know it's just like when you go to the desert and you play. Right. Um, I think right. it's just All acting. He's playing Joe Trevino, a big hitter. It was just yeah. acting. <laughs> <laughs> it was acting. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. You, you guys had a, an advanced screening in Del Rio, where the the original story was set and was told how did the screening go and uh i'm sure you know you've been in you'd already been there before but what was that like and you have a i don't want to say responsibility but maybe the pressure that some real people were involved who were in the movie and there's a little pressure to represent them how, how did that whole experience go yeah it was definitely a lot of pressure i that that was in on, on the one hand it was probably the most fulfilling screenings we've done. They, they filled up uh, an eight, eight screen theater. They sold out all eight screens all at the same time. The whole theater was just the long game. Uh, they had their cheerleaders lined up in front of the theater. So we, you know, cheering as we all went through and um, the, the town turned out all dressed in purple. And, uh, but that, that, then on the flip side though, you know, they, they noticed the things that we didn't get right and they grilled me about it. Uh, they, but, but I, in the end they were, they were super excited. They they, they uh, declared it national, or, or they declared it Mustang Miracle Day, kind of in perpetuity. Um, so that's their Mustang Miracle Day going forward. And they were just very appreciative that there's somebody who's telling their story uh, because 
what I've learned now having done two true stories is that we had, there are a lot of these, these stories that are kind of floating around out there that they just sort of disappear in time and people forget about them. And, um, and when you bring them up, I mean, just the emotions that come out of, uh, especially the older, the older people who were, who actually went through it, uh, it, it was pretty powerful to see their reactions and them being honored by their whole town. I, I felt like that was more, that, that day was a celebration of the original boys more than it was a celebration of our movie. Our movie is just an excuse for that, for everybody to, to remember, what those boys had done. So it was a real honor for us. No, for sure. And just to kind of piggyback off what Julio was saying, I, you know, originally when you, you know, as an actor, you, you know, you're always looking for your next job and, you know, you read a story and if a story resonates with you, you're, you, you know, you're really passionate about it, you go ahead and do it, but you never realize the impact that you have on the actual people until you actually meet yeah. them and to meet the people of that local community and just how much, you know, just appreciation and, and the love that, that, that was, you know, that was felt. Um, it, it just it really just pulled on the heartstrings and, and it just reminded me of, of why I actually do this, you know, and 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 um, whether it was the tiniest bit of, you know, inspiration or motivation, uh, at least for the kids there of that of that city that they saw this movie that they gained from. Um, I, I just feel, you know, all in all, that's why I do this. And and uh, I was I was really proud. And and this was their moment. Like Julio said, it, it was more of a celebration of the movie and, and the people that it was based off of than it was really, you know, for us, um, you know, there was a moment, uh, you know, I was, we were at the, the local country club and uh, me and Julio were sitting and uh, Lupe, who's, you know, an actual person, um, you know, that was portrayed in our movie was sitting there and just to kind of see him and, and hold in and, and, and kind of feel his emotions of, you know, everyone cheering for him and then them doing the, the, the high school anthem that they used to sing back in the day and, and everyone just kind of giving him his, his roses, you know, while he was there. Um, it was really special to see. And uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm just really happy for, for him and, and for everyone that's a part uh, of that family, you know, that's, that's related to, to the film for sure. Well, in, in TV and in movies, you don't get that instant audience feedback as if you were on Broadway and right. a live audience. So that was kind of your chance to get the reaction of, you know, feel the love, really. No, yeah, and and uh, it, it was it definitely was felt for sure. Uh, well, it hasn't been a really great golf movie that was authentic. I think you guys have a shot at it. So congratulations on yes. really what looks. Uh, I love the scene where Dennis Quaid says, uh, I, you know, something like, uh, I'm not here to babysit a bunch of juvenile delinquents. Yeah. Like, you know, that's exactly what somebody would say back yeah. then. <laughs> uh, that was, you know, that's you talking about some of the people nitpicking, but that's something that was authentic that that hit home with me. It's like that that's real conversation. So I thought I think you got that right. No, yeah. And I think that's just a testament to to who Dennis is as, a, as an actor. Yeah. He's so great, right. and and he's making sure that he's you know in every moment you know whether it's the smallest or the biggest moment, it's always the truest self, and uh, that's something that I really respect about him for sure. Mm -hmm. I think he actually, I think that he actually did change that line to juvenile delinquents. I I, I might have had something that sounded a little more modern, and he he changed it. <laughs> well, yeah. in the era, in that era, it would have been juvenile delinquents, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So he'd, he'd be right about that. Um, what what I'm what, what, day, what day does the movie open? April twelfth, next Whoa. next Friday. So we need as many people to turn up as possible. Uh, otherwise, uh, Hollywood won't make any more golf movies. So <laughs> I bet they will, no matter what. <laughs> First ball boy. It's not even a tough shot, Felipe. Oh yeah, Curtis says you can't do better. How about that? Cho cho cho. How would you boys like to be the first members of the San Felipe High School golf team? <laughs> Us. Are they any good? <clears throat> nope. But I don't want to be a babysitter to a bunch of juvenile delinquents who just want to get out of detention. You boys built all this. Yes, Mr. Mitchell. Sorry, boys. When we spoke on the phone, I assumed you were American. Well, you assume right. Now, these teams... They've had access to a lot of things you boys haven't, but the best golfer isn't the one with the fanciest clubs. It's the one who can summon the will to keep swinging when things get tough, and that's you boys. You know, that's just life. Sometimes you land on the green, sometimes you're in the bunker, but you always play it as it lies. <laughs>